be live in a second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 359. Uh, each week, uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Tim Kappam. Uh, Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also uh, a Google product expert uh, in uh, uh, the uh, Google My Business community. Uh, and Tim is based in Corby, uh, about 100 miles north of London. Masataki Wasa is based in Wimbledon, uh, right in the middle of London. Um, he uh, is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. And um, he um, is also a Google product expert on, on the AdSense community. Okay, we have 12 questions tonight. First one is uh, titled, how do I know which change I made was the right one? And it's from David Gizzarelli who uh, goes on to ask, uh, how's everything? My position jumped today, but is it because of changes I made this morning or changes from a month ago? I noticed that some changes happen immediately after inspection, while other times not. How do I know which change I made was the right one? Mm, well, that's going to be a problem, David, because unless you sort of make one change and then wait for like a month, and then make another change and wait for a month and at the same time annotate your analytics when you made that change. But the point is you need to wait, I would say at least minimum of two weeks, you know, <clears throat> that's the only way, which is completely impractical. Because if you're trying to obviously work through a site, that's just, abs you know, absolutely impractical. And of course, if you're going through a, on a site or a site audit and you're working through something, you want to, you know, you, you fix a lot of things. Um, so knowing which one exactly worked or which combination worked is very difficult to, to kind of fathom. Um, I mean, to be, yeah. What you could do is break it down, like if you wanted to, I suppose you could break it down like into sections. Let's say, I mean, I, I, I particularly work with local SEO. So uh, you could break it down into kind of basic sections, like a basic update would be that I would do would be to look at on page for location, correct those. Um, add structured data for the local business and connect and make sure that's working with the, the GMB page. And that, those two, and then obviously look at citations. So from a lo local point of view, those tend to, you know, over a, over a month or two tend to like, you, you would see, you would, exp you would expect and you typically see that reflected. But if I was only going to pick one out of those, it would probably be, <sighs> Yeah, so it's really difficult to say because you, you, you work through a lot of things rather than just one. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and equally, the other flip side of it, how do you know what change made what difference? It's also the flip side that there isn't just one thing that, that will turn the dial for, for a site. So... Like if you went through and corrected all internal linking, just that, but never looked at anything else on site, would that turn the dial? Uh, maybe on a few things, depending on, you know, the internal linking, the anchor text, and if you were internally linking to a particular product uh, or, or landing page, that was actually in the first instance fairly opt well optimized 
then that could potentially turn the dial for that. Do you, do you see what I mean? There's so many variables. Um, yeah. Well, I, like I think we've all said, I don't think there's any particular one way. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think if you did a, a selection of things and you work through site, one quick little handy way is make sure you annotate your notes in your analytics on the day you and you can just say just three little points i updated this across site updated that across site and updated that or i only made one change to this one page and then in analytics over time if that page seems to be doing you know something different you could actually look at your notes and go ah yeah i did i made that but apart from that, there's there's no real way. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's uh, let's uh, move on to number um, two on our run list. Um, this one from um, I'm sorry, I can't read the um, the language there, but uh, um, I think it's Indian. Um, he said, is it okay to write an 8,000 word technical blog post um, with a, a good number of images? Although it is neatly divided with a table of contents, um, I'm worried that it might affect the page's ranking in a certain way. I couldn't make it any shorter because there is a lot to tell. No, do it, do it. I think if you're doing something that big, the only thing to keep in mind is something that large is to provide a, oh, he has this, the spam and they're phoning me back from, yeah, fuck a lot of you. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the only thing with something that big is to make sure that you um, uh, provide good jump throughs to sections. Because something that big, I'm assuming it's gonna have three or four different like sort of chapters, and maybe even maybe even up to six or eight chapters, you know, um, each with sort of individual, I, I would, only thing that big is to just from a user point of view, make sure that the user can jump through from the beginning, like your intro, where you list out what you, you're going to, and, and it would help them also uh, from a user point of view to jump through to that. But no, if you've got 8,000 and it all makes sense, um, you chuck it all. But just from a user point of view, something that big, make sure that the user can jump to the uh, the section that they, that they really want to go to. Um, or reread, or when they come back to it, they could just straight jump back, jump down to the, the correct section. Excellent. Uh, Tim, any more for that? Okay, let's move on to the next. Um, it is number three on our run list. It's from Danny Goodwin. I'm oh, really pleased to see this. Um, Danny is editor of uh, Search Engine Journal, and um, uh, he asked a question on um, the Domicio Questions Facebook group. Um, I guess that means we've finally arrived, Tim, does it? <laughs> anyway, uh, Danny said, um, what's the current thinking around social signals as a Google ranking factor? If you think it is a factor, why slash how do you think it is used? Or if not, why not? And what exactly is a social signal, in your opinion? Um, I'm writing a post on this for Search Engine Journal, so I'm curious for everyone's current takes. Uh, thanks in advance. Um, <laughs> so, look, I, I think social signals and SEO has been dispelled for the last, well, I don't know how long, five years, should we say? However, the point being here is 
if you've got a piece of content um, and their content is ranking pretty well, um, you know, it's visible, let's say, first page, it's, it's really well written, it's, you know, it's useful and informative, people will naturally share it, right? So, but, but the idea is that essentially, I think the only way that you can, so <laughs> the thing is people are going to read it and share it because they found it useful. And of course, at that time, they're sharing it, they're sharing it socially, therefore those social, uh, uh, you know, those metrics are, are building up on page, for example. But it's not those social metrics that are driving that page's traffic. So the way the way you can look at this quite 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 simply, Danny, is now uh, is to publish a piece which you know on your site which you think is quite good. It's a guide or it's a whatever, but n no index it. So therefore, it doesn't appear in in um, search results, right? And then get to marketing that just with social right now and then have a look at your your your, your traffic per se um I, I just social signals to combine with something they work in tandem but you know because people go and visit it they share it they may just share the url they may you know because it's a good piece of content but a social just social is not going to have something it's, it's, it's not going to rank it, unfortunately. Um, but it works in tandem because, you know, if something's good and popular, people go to it. And, of course, you gain the, the social signals. But you're not going to rank something when – and I think we would prove this time and time again where if you just went and bought social signals and just chucked them on the things in the good old bad days – you know, it, it, it never did anything for the for, for, for the piece. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any more? All right, we'll move on to the next. It's uh, from Flavius Fotia. Uh, it's titled Optimizing Categories, which have a lot of latent semantic indexing keywords. Um, I'd like to point out that um, um, in in the comments, uh, um, it, it's po it's pointed out by Michael Martin is that, that uh, um, latent semantic indexing uh, is something of uh, an SEO myth. Anyway. Um, he said, hi, I'm optimizing my categories right now for a new e-commerce website. Uh, the categories have a lot of LSI keywords, so latent semantic e indexing. Uh, what do you think is the best practice? One, uh, to create a huge article in the category description. Seems kind of impractical to me. Uh, two, uh, to create a, a brief description and to create an article containing the main keyword and all the um, LSI keywords and an internal link to the category. I think of choosing uh, the second practice uh, to create an article containing the main keyword and the uh, LSI keywords with a link, exact match anchor, which I think should be fine um, to the category. Um, he said, I want to know your opinion. Thank you in advance. As usual, Michael doesn't mince his words. Yeah, I think Michael just answers it. Yeah. By the way, is um, the yellow and blue screen is is that showing up um, on 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 the screen that you see on on in front of yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, it's showing normal. Excellent. Well. I wish you could see from this side. It, it doesn't show at all. But anyway. All right, let's... Um, yes, the, uh, Michael's answer uh, for this um, it has got to be called uh, uh, definitive. 
Let's go to the next. We're up to number five, almost halfway. Chris Green asked the question titled, how to install individual redirects after switching domain. Chris said, hi, guys. Uh, just wondering if we move domains from a .co to a .com domain, uh, the same website. The only thing that changes is the domain. How do we install uh, individual redirects then, not just the home page? Would it be at the domain name register registrar level? Um, well, you would obviously buy both domains. Um, and you would use your, well, that's, I'm guessing it depends. You could either use the, the, the people you purchased it from. Yeah, you would have to, you'd have to do it via there. Um, so if you, if you had two domains that you, that weren't live, then you would, whoever you purchased it from, normally, depending, you can do it for free. You can, within your, with your, within your, uh, within your domain, within your account, with them, whoever you purchased it from, uh, you can normally redirect a URL to, uh, sorry, a domain to another domain. If you had sites running on both of these, or you had a site running on one, and you purchased another domain, then it's slightly different, because so one then on your the one that you've just purchased that you want you're obviously going to have to create your site um and then you've got another you've got the other domain then it's obviously more difficult you need to use 301 redirects you need to map all the urls within the old site that you're redirecting to the new site remap them out to the new urls etc etc so it kind of depends on what you are doing Okay, thank you, uh, Tim. Micah Fisher Kirshner has just joined. Uh, Micah is the director of SEO and content uh, at uh, Turn River Capital in the United States. He's based in the, on the west coast of uh, the USA. Is that far enough away from um, Donald Trump, um, Micah? Not in the globalized world. Uh, can, can anyone ever be far enough away from Donald Trump? <laughs> anyway. Okay, so... Uh, I'm distracted. Um, we, we've covered this one, haven't we, Tim? Yep. Okay, so let's go to number six on our run list. It's from Nick Robinson. It's titled, How Important is Assigning Keywords to Pages um, Nowadays? Mm, how important is assigning keywords to pages? Sorting metadata, H1, H2 tags, alt tags, keyword density within content, etc. nowadays. I mean, there's still a semblance of importance. Um, not necessarily to all the little areas that you've mentioned. Um, and Google's taking in more factors, not all of them being you know, at the same level, but um, it is trying to make better judgment calls than purely based off of one set. Um, but you would be remiss to not use keywords or topical uh, sets of keywords as a way to uh, define relevance and what you're trying to you know, show up for and what people actually look for. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to number... Uh... Seven on our run list. Thank you, Micah. 
Um, Graham Souththorne asked the question, he said, I heard a duplicate content is actually a myth. Very confusing. Well, we hope to uh, dispel uh, the uh, uh, confusion. Um, Graham said, I'm part of a small franchise network in the UK, about 20 franchisees. Um, previously, there, there were blog posts uh, on the main company website, but now the owner has decided that each individual franchisee will have a landing page with a blog um, attached to it. Some of the other franchisees have asked me if I would now write blogs for them, which they could adapt. My question is, how much would they have to change slash adapt them before Google penalises them for duplicate content? I've read on some marketing sites that duplicate content is actually a myth anyway. It's very confusing. Uh, it would be great to get the views of the real experts on here. Thank you. Uh, we did this. We've done this one. Not today, but I think it was the uh, previous week, the week before. Really? Um, yeah. Okay. So I think so. So. Look, this is the thing. You, de depending on, uh, I mean, even if there's 10 and you've got 10 locations and they're in slightly, they're, they're obviously in different areas, there is no way that you're going to be able to create uh, sufficiently unique content. Uh, I don't know. So let's say, um, I don't know, let's just say you uh, a, a bathroom company or something. Um, there's no way you're going to be able to create for those 10 blogs for those locations um or like i don't know let's just say what is a ras approved wras approved um tap or which should i pick chrome or stainless steel tap right you you can't make that relevant to those particular locations right um it's as simple as that and you don't want 10 <laughs> slightly different ones but exactly the same because google will just filter one you know the other nine out and just show one so the way, uh, and, and of course, you know, one of your ways to have a look at this is just look at some uh, hotel sites out there, like some of the OTAs, online travel agents. Essentially, so, you know, you, you are going to create that one piece of content, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. So, for example, on your local landing pages for each of those locations, it goes, you know, location A, it'll be, hi, where da, 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 this is the team that will be serving you in this area. Um, you know, and obviously those are different. It's like Bob, Jim, and Jane. Um, you know, uh, th where you are, the hours of that store, directions to the store, etc. There's nothing wrong with, you know, then linking to to the blog. Um, of course, when you have, uh, and, and, and each location can have their own landing page for the blog, right? But essentially, it's kind of the same. Um, and where you have unique, obviously, that would be categorized for the unique. So you're not duplicating the content, but you are showing those particular pages which are fine-tuned for unique onto there, but they're all still essentially, you're not duplicating them. They're all, all still essentially one article. You're just categorizing them correctly. Brilliant, uh, Tim. Okay, let's roll on to number eight on our run list. It's um, from Christian Mulebar. Um, Christian said, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't pronounce your name correctly. I, I, I did my best. I'll, I'll try again next week or whenever you ask another question, I should say. Um, it's Anyway, Christian's question is titled Webmaster Tools Question as I don't get it. Um, Christian said, hey guys, and thanks in advance. Um, he said, a website relaunch was done, not my responsibility, about 4,000 pages about one week ago. Um, a whole new URL structure. Uh oh. Um, new uh, content management system. Um, a page content uh, mostly copied. No um, 301 redirects were done. 
Um, the crawler spiked a, a bit last week, but most of the pages have been crawled, it seems. Um, the old URLs deliver 404. Question one, I see zero four oh fours in Google Webmaster Tools. I think I remember some update or so a while ago so that not every 404 will be shown anymore in some Google blog notes, but no errors at all. Question two, I'd expect to see the 404 stick longer inside the search engine results, but actually after one week, I barely see any left. Um, and then new URLs uh, directly appear even without any 301 um, in almost the same position. This seems odd to me. I've been told that 72% of all URLs have been crawled by Googlebot. That's quite a specific number and I've been wondering uh, how to calculate it slash if any tool uh, does that. I would, for example, go for the ser server logs. Well, um, let's, let's try to tackle this. So on the 404, it's not showing up in, in Surf Console. Um, one of the questions I have, because since you're doing a, a URL migration domain my uh, yeah is it a different domain it's a different sub domain is your search console set up to be only focused in one sub directory uh those types of questions are kind of important because if they're in the wrong they're in a different area um they won't show up in your um new search console account or they uh will disappear um if you've set it up somehow differently as a result uh the 404s potentially disappearing quickly uh, on Google could be that you have a very authoritative site in some fun faction function um, such that it's quickly getting uh, removed. Uh, and the same thing could be that you know, there might have been some function done for those new URLs to be uh, showing up. Oh, so riddle solved. Um, ah, so he looked under the wrong profile or wrong section. Okay. Um, you found me in the link? Okay. So, uh, he has seen it and they were just under a different profile. Also a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else I should go with that then? <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I think you've covered it, uh, Micah. All right, let's, let's go to number nine. This is from Ryan Hoke. Um, it's titled Open in a New Window or just go straight to the product page. Ryan asked, uh, do you guys have your affiliate links open in a new window? or just go straight to the product page, having the user need to click back to go to your money site. Um, what do you think is the better conversion rate wise? Um, I hope you guys don't mind. Can I jump in and, and say, because I, I did a, uh, a, a lot of that and um, over about a 10 year period, uh, switch back and forwards between opening in a new window um, or opening in the same window. Um, yeah, I, I didn't ever find uh, anything um, um, of, of note to report, but um, it's certainly it's something I puzzled on uh, for many, many years and um, what was more effective. Uh, I even with you know as as browsers um changed the, the way they did things it, it it didn't really seem to make a difference or at least not to anything measurable did you guys feel the same about that all right that, that's um yeah, 
I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Ryan Hug. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I haven't got a better answer for that. Um, all right, that number uh, 10 on our run list from Tom Riley. It's titled, Google is choosing the old URL as a canonical URL. Tom said, I changed my URL structure. Content is the same. I submitted page to be indexed by Search Console and uh, submitted uh, sitemap.xml. Google is choosing the old URL as the canonical uh, URL. Uh, any ideas on how to get around this? So use a 301. Canonical is a suggest strong suggestion, whereas a 301 is mandatory, basically. Um, that will get Google to flip to the new URL that you want. Yeah. All right, moving on, uh, number uh, 11 on our um, run list um, from JL Favaria. How often do you check your site in search engine result pages? Incessantly. <laughs> All right. Um, can we get an answer for this, please, guys? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm checking it often. Um, both, you know, checking on things that have popped up, uh, keeping an eye on uh, what's going on, um, trying to find specific things within the site because maybe they don't have a site search available, and I'm looking for something pretty deep. Um, but it's more than a few clicks away from the home page. So there's a tons of reasons for, for going through and checking about the site and the SERPs um, outside of even just pure you know, ranking interest as well. Excellent. Um, look, I must also point out um, people like Rob Watts, um, um, Michael Martinez, uh, pe people who answer questions um, throughout the week and uh, make our um, our group uh, such a, a valuable um, resource. Uh, their, 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 their contribution is sincerely appreciated. All right. Um, am I going crazy? No. And looking for the next one. Yes, we've got one left. Um, Ross Raffin asked the question, link building efforts around guest posting. He said, if my link building efforts center around guest posting, should I also wor work on making, I guess, sure there is a tier two p uh, private blog network, uh, niche edit, etc., pointing to the guest posts? I've heard from some that a guest post with no links pointed at it will be devalued uh, much more if uh, a few links um, point um, to it. Well, if um, the, I, I did see Ammon Johns, I um, you know, sort of also uh, thanked um, before for for their con his contribution. But uh, Ammon Johns, um, um, I suppose that's a definitive answer. So the thing that I just want to throw in quickly with guest posting, yeah, Ross, is that. Um, if you are, if you are now, let's say you are actually going to guest post and it's going to be a great piece of content. Um, <laughs> which 99.9% .9 of the time it's normally not, but you still obviously want to put effort into it, but you found some site that's going to accept a free guest post. Okay. You put in all your effort um, into creating a great piece of content that's going to be hosted on a mediocre, pretty shit 
pretty crap shit site that's never going to see the light of day in terms of traffic. Um, and all for what? For this piece of content you produce to sit on something that's never going to see the light of day purely because the domain, you know, is, is, is rubbish. Um, it's set up badly. It's whatever. Okay. Why not put that on your own site and market it yourself? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Quite, you know, just put the effort into your own site. Um, a lot of high profile places, industry blogs, texts, things like that won't actually give you, um, you know, uh, uh, a link in site. You know, they'll normally quote you as the author. Um, and yeah, you might get a link back, but um, for that, you're typically brand building. People are going to read that and then contact you and go, oh, I see what you wrote on this and blah, blah, blah. Can you do that for me? Or, you know, I'm interested in this product or whatever the case may be. Um, and the quid pro quo is you don't get a link, but it's high profile and you typically want to either build your brand name because it's visible or you sell product if it's, you know, I don't know if it's in the newspapers and they say, oh, this great new product just arrived. So what I'm trying to get at is, you know, it, it's not all about the links. And if it's a shitty thing that's a free, accepting free guest posts, or you literally pay in to put it in there, whatever the case may be, um, it, it it's not really going to have any value for you and rather put your effort onto your own site and create, you know, put that, put that great piece of content, um, onto your own site. Excellent, Tim. Thank you very much for that. All right. Um, it looks like it's uh, that time again. Yes. It's thank you for watching time. Uh, Mike Fisher Kirshner is going to leave us uh, right now. He has another meeting to head off to. <laughs> um, thank, thank you for joining us this morning, Micah. Pleasure being here. Take care. Okay. Now, as well as thanking Micah, I'd also like to thank people like Michael Martinez, Ammon Johns, Rob Watts, um, and of course our panelists, um, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, um, and of course Micah. Uh, um and and you know the the, the people that m make our uh, um our recording is so valuable we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again but um uh, for now it's um good